Welcome to my 2024 desk setup tour. Now my setup has definitely changed a lot from the last time I made this video almost a year ago and I'm super excited to be sharing it with you. Some stuff has stayed the same like the general layout and my wall fixtures but the core components are new to the setup for 2024. Everything I mentioned in this video will be linked below for you to check out for yourself. Without further ado, let's get into the video. First up, let's start with the centerpiece, which is obviously my standing desk. This is the FlexiSpot E7 Pro in the red oak color, and it's a solid piece of wood. And this desk is absolutely massive. The size is 72 by 30 inches, which is in fact much larger than a solid wooden desk should be. And so the weight of it is starting to cause some cracks at the end. My version came with black legs, which fits the aesthetic of my setup nicely. There's also a mini drawer also from FlexiSpot, which is screwed in. And this is super useful for smaller items, which I need to reach for constantly. This drawer does tend to get messy quickly. There's also a cable basket at the back where I have a power cord sitting. This makes cable management super easy, but my favorite part and the most useful part is actually this power extension brick. It has three fully sized plugs, a USB-C, and a USB 3.0 plug, which makes charging all of my stuff on my desk a breeze. This was also from FlexiSpot. Overall, I love the size of this desk. It helps me get so much work done and I do have a dedicated YouTube video on this desk, which I'll link below if you're interested in learning more. And this is a standing desk, so it does have a control panel where you can set multiple presets. I've set up a standing and a sitting preset, but I'll be honest, I almost never use the standing feature. And that's because I'm always sitting, which I feel like is a nice transition into my chair. I'm sitting in the Lamborghini of gaming chairs. This is the Herman Miller and Logitech Embody gaming chair, which I've had for almost a year now, and that my friends from Gabriel Ross sent out to me. Almost everything about this chair is adjustable, it breathes incredibly well, and the back of your spine contorts perfectly to the shape of the chair. And I sit in this chair for hours on end every single day. This is one part in my setup that I do not see myself changing at all in the upcoming year. It's perfect in every single way. Now again, I have a dedicated review and unboxing of this chair, which I'll leave linked below if you want to learn more about it. But I will say, before I got this chair, I had a ton of back pain, which all magically went out the window as soon as this chair arrived. From here, let's jump onto the desk and the monitor I'm using is from BenQ. Shout out to BenQ for sending this over and it's the PD3205U. So this is a 32 inch 4K UHD sRGB HDR10 monitor with USB-C powering. That means that a single USB-C cable plugs into my MacBook and it powers the laptop and the connection. This monitor is from BenQ's designer series, so it's literally meant for anyone looking for a high level of color accuracy and who spends time editing photos and videos, which is exactly what I do. It comes with various color profiles, including industry standards, but it also has a MacBook mode and Apple RGB built in to replicate Apple colors, and it does a fantastic job. This makes it so that what you see on your monitor is much closer to what you would see on your iPhone. BenQ also sent me the ergo arm. This allows me to reposition the monitor super easily to wherever I want and it also helps to hide the cables and keep them out of the way. It also comes with a hockey puck which I use to control the brightness of the monitor depending on the time of day. Sticking with BenQ, they also sent me their Halo light bar which I've been using much longer than this monitor and it has quickly become my favorite desk lamp. It creates a nice level of light on my desk letting me see everything directly in front of me which is useful since I like to work in the dark most of the time. It comes with its own wireless control puck, which takes batteries, unfortunately, but it is able to control things like brightness and temperature. But personally, I just leave it on auto. Next to the light bar, I have my webcam, which is the Opal C1. Opal did send me this and has been super handy for me because I keep my laptop docked 
in this Amazon dock, which is super cheap and is black. So it looks nice in my desk setup. And obviously my monitor doesn't have a webcam. So this makes it much easier for me to take zoom calls. I don't have to unlock my laptop and open it up and take meetings. I have to be on camera for, which is what I was doing previously. This monitor is powered by my 14 inch MacBook pro with the M2 pro chip. I don't know what to tell you, but this laptop is an absolute beast. It has changed my life in every way. I came from a 2019 Intel MacBook previously, and ever since I switched to the Canon R5 and now the Canon R5C, I have needed a machine that can keep up. This laptop allows me to take 8K raw video and just drop it into my timeline in Final Cut Pro 10, and it doesn't even stutter. I don't need to make proxies or anything. But other than that, it's a MacBook. I've got a first impressions video I made on this laptop last year, and I'll leave that link below if you all want more info. My keyboard and mouse of choice are the classic Apple Magic Keyboard and Magic Mouse. I thought about switching these multiple times, a lot of times actually, for cooler looking stuff. But here's the thing, I will never sacrifice utility for looks when it comes to my setup, and that's why these two items have remained. Apple makes the best Apple products, and with the keyboard short cuts and the mouse gestures, it doesn't make sense for me to interrupt my workflow. If I were to change one of these two, it would be the mouse and that's because for some reason the charging port is on the bottom. So when it dies, I can't keep using it unfortunately. Both these items sit on this black Amazon desk pad, which is nothing fancy, but it works for me because Theo sits on my desk often and he'll scratch whatever pad I get. This one has lasted over two years and while I've tried others, I found myself coming back to this one. I can also see his fur clearly since it's black so I know when it's time to clean up. In front of my desk pad under my monitor, I keep some SSDs and hard drives as well as two figurines. This one was sent to me by my friends at iFlight for Christmas this year and this one is a miniature Vegeta, all hail the Prince of Saiyans which I picked up in Thailand, I believe, for a few dollars. Moving to the right, I have my engagement shoot book, which was shot over five years ago now. I also have this golden chalice or a cup or mug from Clocks and Colors, and this thing is super heavy. I just toss in a bunch of tools and smaller items. It's not very organized. And next to that, I have this black pencil case with this red glove in front of it, which we'll get to in a second. But this black pencil case just has more of the same stuff that the golden cup has. I was really influenced to buy this pen from Muji because of Peter McKinnon, I won't lie. And I've literally never used it. The red glove. This is a glove signed by Habib or Habib. Yeah, that Habib. And I was lucky enough to work on a project this year with Mishari, who is a famous Muslim reciter. And while he was here, he met up with the fighter Islam. And that's sort of the background on how I ended up with this glove. No big deal. I recently started burning incense in my room because of my friend Jonah, who I finally met up with last year in Toronto. The incense holder is nothing special. It's a larger piece, which I got from Amazon. I liked the color and it was also cheap. The incense sticks, however, are from Aesop, so they were not cheap. But I do like the way they make my room smell and they last a really long time. Moving off the desk and onto the right, we have my Alex drawers. I won't get too much into these, but I use these for all of my extra stuff I don't want on my desk, such as cables, tools, batteries, and FPV parts. This gets really messy. On top of it, I have a floor lamp from a random company on Amazon and they don't make this lamp anymore, but there are some alternatives that look the same and do the same thing. I lost the remote for this a long time ago, so it's stuck on this temperature and brightness, unfortunately. Next to this, I have a plant holder, which my snake plant sits on, and it has really stood the test of time. All of this is from Ikea. Then I have a black pegboard on my wall, also from Ikea, which I use to hang my drones and hold some smaller items like lens caps in the storage baskets. On top of my desk, I have this black shelf from Ikea, which I use to store gear that I don't use anymore, and it adds some nice height to the desk setup. Switching over to the other side of my desk, I've started keeping this hand vacuum from a company called Hoto and I use it to basically vacuum up Dio's fur, which he leaves on my desk. It's super powerful and heavy duty, which I love. I'm also an iPad kid now. This is the 11 inch M2 iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard and the Apple Pencil too. If I'm leaving the desk setup, this is what I take with me to work on in other places of the house. 
I have a day in the life video coming out on this soon, so I won't go too much into depth here. I've also got the Rode Pro Arm clamped onto my desk, which holds my Rode XLR pod mic, which is then plugged into the Rode A1 audio interface. I use this mic for voiceovers like this video and for Zoom meetings. I actually love the sound quality and it's convenient to always have it in reach with the Pro Arm. And finally, we have my desk's key light, and this light is a secret workhorse. This is the SD80D by a company called GVM, standing for Great Video Maker, and it's just awesome. I can't say enough good things about it. I have it plugged into my power bar, but it can be run wirelessly if you have the batteries for it. It gets incredibly bright, but the best part is, is that it never overheats, so I can let this run all day, which is exactly what I need it for because, again, I like to work in the dark. If you need a beginner key light that's small, affordable, and powerful, I cannot recommend this light enough. And that's everything. That's my desk setup going into 2024. I might be changing my monitor soon to the Apple Pro display and maybe my mouse, but other than that, I'm extremely happy with how I have my space dialed in for the upcoming year. I feel like it's set up for maximum productivity at the moment, and I'm excited to put it to good use this year. I would love to hear your thoughts on what you liked or how you feel like I can improve my space. But anyways, that's it for this video. I'll see y'all in the next one. And until then, keep creating.